So what do we need to yeah. do to fill the gap, just current by? Um, we have cricket lanes, full 200 feet run up. You can like, you know, we can bowler can go full run up all the way. I, I have never seen that. All right, bro. So rapid fire round with Jessica and Malotra. We're interviewing Jessica and Malotra, who electrified the cricketing world and etched his name into the history books. He achieved a stunning feat of hitting six sixes in a single over that not only showcased his incredible talent, but also spotlighted cricket's exciting emergence in the USA. He'll be talking to us today as he shares his insights on the World T20 aspirations, burgeoning cricket scene in the USA, and the rigorous preparation that paved the way for excellence. Jessica Run, it's an honor to have you on here, brother. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. Uh, thanks for having me, Nabil. Um, of course, I'm very excited. And I've been really busy lately with a lot of... Uh, co my coaching has really picked up. And then I've been busy training and like going to the gym, training my skills. And it's just been a lot of it. And then the season is around the corner. So... It's just uh, I enjoy being busy, but I mean, of course, I'm excited for the show. Yeah, man, I'm sure. Like, I'm, I'm really excited to see you, man. So, you know, first off, let's, you know, talk uh, a little bit about your early cricketing journey. Just current by because I want to, you know, get into like, obviously, you started off in India, right? And you moved mm -hmm. and, and the transition from, you know, coming over. Um, how was that transition like? And, and what was the differences, the changes in perception in India and in the USA cricket? What were some differences? It was like totally opposite. It's like, you know, living in India and America, like two different countries. It's like totally opposite. You drive left side, here you drive right side over there. So it's just opposite. So when I first came to the US, I was young. I was 19. I came here with a bunch of IPL guys. When they approached me that there's a tournament in the US and they wanted me to come as a wicketkeeper batsman. And I was like, what? Cricket in the US? And they got the visa done in a couple of days or what? Because I was still playing professionally back home. And then I landed in Seattle. And then that's how my journey started. It was different for me. We are playing a lot of cricket on uh, turf in India. Like, you know, they're like proper stadiums. And then when I first... Uh, got to seattle uh, i had a flavor of uh, astroturf playing uh, which personally i enjoyed a lot ball was coming nicely onto the bat outfield wasn't the best like you have to hit sixes in the us so from the beginning that had like god had given me that natural ability to clear the boundary even when i was playing in india as well i used to practice a lot with the concrete and synthetic balls that helped me a lot wow man i mean so it was just naturally built in you right because you were growing up obviously in India, and some things are naturally, as you said, God gifted, but the talent has to be nurtured and the work that yeah. you put in over the years into your game has really nurtured it. And those six sixes, man, you know, let's let's bring that up right up and early because, yeah. you know, that's iconic from a perspective of putting American cricket on the map, first of all, right? Because those sixes really announced that the USA cricket has talent. You know, it just needs mm -hmm. to be nurtured. It's out there. So you are a pure example of, you know, going on to the international stage and, and really capturing a limelight, man, with those six sixes. So what was the feeling like? I'm sure the fans want to know. You know, it's a it's a big record, man. And and that list of players that you're in there with, you know, it's uh it's a pretty amazing list to be to be a part of. I mean, it's a great feeling here, but uh I'm always a big believer of process, as you said, like uh it didn't come easy. Like, I've been working all these years hard in the US. Like, I've never really worked, work, like, have a nine to five job. I've always focused on my cricket. My uh, goals have been pretty set and clear. Like, it's not easy. I mean, the road has been bumpy, but I mean, I feel like now God has put me in a position where, like, you know, cricket has given me everything. And I like uh, just, I mean, cricket is such a great sport. I feel like if you put your heart and soul into it, honestly, results do come in your favor but more than so, uh six sixes i've been saying like the process even before that too right the way my coach told me that you'll be more of a finisher you won't bat uh top of the order i had a, a meeting with the captain so they were looking at me in a different role but in that game we lost a couple of i think we lost three wickets for 30 and i was in pretty early in the 10th over which i felt it's kind of my strength to like I went in, it's a 50 over game and I went in the 12th over or 11th over. I don't really remember exactly, but I was in quite early. Ball was still kind of moving and it was coming onto the bat nicely, which I personally enjoy. But once I started expressing myself and uh, the, 
wicket was a phenomenal in Oman, like one of the best batting pitches I've ever played on. I think it just started happening on its own organically. Wow, man. Yeah. So you never, it wasn't like a part of the, you know, you weren't thinking about it, right? But it was just like, it just happened, as you said, and it was just like one after another because of the work that was compounding, you know, that you were putting in and the belief, obviously, as well, I think, because yeah. I think it's a huge feat, man, for, you know, in history of yeah. cricket, you know, I think you're looking at it a very humble way, you know, but not well, many people have achieved it. Six, six says, you know, uh, in, it wasn't the last over, so I batted for almost 30, 40 overs, like the whole innings, yeah. I almost faced 120 balls, I don't even remember, but Saurabh, he's a good friend of mine, he wasn't the non-striker, and so I told Saurabh, I've already hit like 12 sixes in that inning before yeah. the six sixes, so I told Saurabh, I'll play the last over because of course he was giving me the strike and I wanted the strike because I was batting 120. I told Saurabh, I'm minimum looking for three sixes because once I'm in the zone and sixes are like my thing. So I wanted to hit at least three. I don't want to sound arrogant and stuff like I was looking for four. For, I'll be honest, I was looking for three sixes in last over. But after the first three sixes, I actually thought about it. Hey, you never know, I can do it. But my main focus again was on the process. I was trying to keep my shape and not over hit the ball or not try and do something fancy. Just play with their mind. Play with their field set. If you see in the second six, they set up a field outside off stump, right? And the bowler came around yeah. the stump. And the way I went outside the stump, like it was, it was just, I, I've been doing that. And at that day, just everything fell in place. It's crazy, man. So like when sometimes, obviously, right, that kind of a shot, you premeditate or you play on merit. So how much of it is premeditation just going by you? And how much of it is actually deciding that, hey, I'm going to hit this ball on, on, on merit, right? So it's a little bit of both. Yeah, it comes with a lot yeah. of preparation as well. And of course, the field set, like when I'm batting 130, yeah. you know, they're trying to bowl wider for Austin because that's where the field is set, right? So it's like um, I stood outside the Austin and you can see in the video, I left all my three stumps and that I've been doing that for years. Now. If you see all my domestic videos, and even in the tournaments, I do that because I feel that's my strong point, right? And especially with my height, I'm 6'1". So anything on the stumps, I'm good enough. Or like I've practiced that, I, I enjoy flicking the ball. So I basically wanted him to show my stump so that they can bowl under the stumps. And that's what he did. And I flipped him for a six. Absolutely, man. And and you also mentioned, right? Like you prefer to bat up the order and, you know, you were given a role within, you know, the US setup or the league setup where you play as a finisher. Mm -hmm. But you, do you prefer playing in the higher order, right? I mean, I assume, like, I mean, the best batters usually do, right? They want to play the maximum number of deliveries. So where where's your mindset with it? I know, you know, you mentioned that you prefer playing maximum deliveries. So just want to get the little insight there. I think I've uh, changed my game a lot. Like, uh, I think that when I was in T10 Abu Dhabi, Andy Flower was my coach. So he called me into his room and he gave me a, a life-changing suggestion which changed my life after that. So he told me, he said, just Karan, I need to talk to you. I said, sure, coach. He's a big coach. He's won Ashes five, six times. He's won World Cup. He's trained with Kevin Peterson and best guys in the world. So he said, just Karan, I have seen you very closely because we are in the same team, of course. He's thrown balls at me and stuff like that. So he said, I've noticed that there are few players in the world who can hit sixes from ball one. So he gave me an example. He said, who are the highest paid players in IPL right now? Like finishers. He said, Hetmar, Tim David, Pollard, all those guys like Dinesh Karthik. He was an RCB for a finisher for just five balls. He said, everybody yeah. wants to bat top of the order. One, two, three, four. Because that's where you can pile up stats, 50s, 60s and T20, right? Or even hundreds. Yeah. But the most important part of the team is how they finish it. That's where those Tim Davids, Hetmeyers, Pollard, Russell, all these guys. So Andy Flower trained me like that. And I think that change my mind. You know, my role after that incident has changed a lot. I have seen cricket in a very uh, broad-minded way. So let's say uh, when we are playing T20 or World Cup or any uh, league or even 50 overs, right? So our top orders do a lot of important work facing the new ball and setting up the game for us finishers to do the job. Different kind of players have different roles in the team, but my role is specifically to finish the job for the team. Let's say if you're in trouble, I try my best. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't succeed, but I feel like it's a very tough role to be in, to go in there in the 40th over, start hitting from ball one, or you're chasing six runs per over, or maybe 12 runs per over. So I think I've changed my mindset. I've visualized my game like that, and I'm really enjoying that. Wow, that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm you know, super excited to hear that and see, 
you know, in this upcoming T20 World Cup. So, you know, what are some aspirations for the upcoming World Cup, just current by Do we have a chance at, you know, lifting the cup? Or what are the honest opinions, man? How are we looking? See, I'll be very honest. I feel like we do have the talent in the U.S. Everybody knows. I mean, it's also not easy because we are, in my opinion, I feel like we don't really train together as a group. We should, we should be. That's what U.S. cricket is working on. And because of the USA circuit and U.S. environment, like let's say Los Angeles is three hours behind. It's cold in the East Coast. It's hot in the West Coast. So it's different in the U.S. It's not like India, Pakistan, Australia or wherever. It gets easier to uh, get the whole team together. So we've been working very hard as a team. We've been following our individual plans. And of course, U.S. cricket has been putting in a lot of work and effort. And hopefully, I'm, I don't see, again, we don't really think about winning the World Cup and stuff. It's about expressing ourselves and giving our best shot for winning the World Cup. I feel like T20 is a very funny game. We do have the talent. But if we play to our potential, we might surprise a couple of big teams. That's my take for sure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the guys, you know, the last series I think USA played was, I think, in July of last year, right? So the guys haven't come together in a little bit and trained together. And I don't yeah. think, I, I think Ali came up with a statement during the 100 day to go ceremony, right? He was in Dallas. And I think he mentioned that, you know, there's nothing going around right now. Nobody knows where's the practices, yeah. Yeah. what's the set, like, you know, getting the guys together. So it's too close. You know, we're like three months away. Right? And it doesn't seem yeah. like a lot of things are happening. Yeah, but see, I agree. Again, my thing is we can only control the controllable. That is the board's job to take care of all that. Our job as players is to focus on our training, our game, and our teammates. Right, That is in our control. But organizing things or organizing camps, whatever, that's out of my control. But I, I'm a very positive guy. I always look at the biggest, uh, bigger picture, and I hope our board can be proactive and have some camps and stuff. Absolutely, man. I think it's a must for us to, you know, at least get the guys right. together, get them going, get our best players, you know, put put right. whatever agenda we have aside for just this World Cup and get yeah. our best guys on board and let's go give, you know, a, a right. couple of upsets, man, to the top teams. And I think yeah. we are we are capable of doing that if, if, if we can for get sure, the right man. guys together. Oh, absolutely, man. That's awesome. Um, yeah. You know, at the, I hear, uh, Jessica, and Maya, you were part of the Baltimore Royals as well as a coach or something. Is there a story behind that? No, I was actually leading my minor league. So I was captain. I was in North Carolina for three years. I yeah. led uh, Morrisville Cardinals for two okay. years. My team did pretty well. And then that's how I got in touch with Rajat Bai, the owner of uh, Baltimore Royals. And then last year, um, I led the minor league team and then they also built up one of the biggest cricket facility in the u.s it's twenty thousand square feet very nice indoor facility yes it's where's that located uh, do you want to give them a shout out just current by where's the yeah, facility it's in, located? Uh, it's in maryland uh columbia maryland and i've i've traveled the world for cricket and i feel like this is probably the best facility Twenty thousand square feet like you can just think about it it's a half acre it's a half acre it's a lot of space we have a gym we have badminton we have ping pong we have cricket lanes full 200 feet run up you can like you know we can bowler can go full run up all the way i have never seen that in us forget somewhere else so i mean it's a great facility i thought it's a great exposure for me to guide youngsters as well and improve my own cricket as well because i train there every day awesome so shout out to you know that facility and and thank you for mm -hmm. You know, doing that because obviously it's, uh, you know, we need more facilities like this, high upgrade facilities yeah. where players like yourselves can go and train yeah. and, you know, yeah. in, in most of the U.S. So, you know, that's pretty awesome there. I think we were talking also about, you know, the Baltimore Royals, obviously the coaching setup. So is that, was that like the first taste of coaching for you, Jessica and Valley, like getting into it or were you doing it even prior to that? What was I the, was how did you get into the coaching, coaching setup? For a long time. More than coaching, I call it a mentorship. I feel like a lot of these American kids, I have seen personally, I have seen a lot of coaches, like senior coaches from um, like Pakistan, India or Australia come from those countries and start coaching the youngsters in the U.S. I feel like the cricket over there and the environment over there is very different to the U.S. I feel like U.S. kids are different as compared to any other country. So we got to kind of like win their trust. It's more of a mentorship to build them from bottom level. You know, we just can't come in and start telling them, hey, do this, hey, do that, top hand, bottom hand, or X, Y, Z. I feel like it's more of a mentorship where you win their trust and you explain them, like basically buying into the idea of why cricket is such a beautiful sport. So basically my job has been like that, I guess, even in my team, like I feel like always helping 
so yeah, i was in houston coaching i was in north carolina coaching and then again i am a big believer of natural talent but you de- do need some kind of mentorship it's not about just coaching their skills but it's also mentorship guiding them how to go to the next level yeah, absolutely and uh, you know with obviously with skill sets as well right it's just the disciplines that come with the cricket right so it maybe a, a kid's not made for professional cricket but if they're part of still a, a cricket team or some type of a team at a young age it gives them the right disciplines right for living yes. their life with the right type of you know discipline mm-hmm. so i think the kids that we have here at nimalpur cricket academy you know that trained yeah. under coach jay singh you know and mm-hmm. these kids uh, you know started young and inexperienced you know seven yeah. year girls you know 10 year kids mm-hmm. eight yes. years and they're improving so great man and you know and mm-hmm. building a community around that has been an awesome for for us yeah, here in yeah. all part of yeah, the yeah so you know the community of for cricket of growth you know is is mm-hmm. what i guess what i'm trying to get to is you know cuz for us to grow cricket here we have to get more of these communities kind of growing right. cricket within their own regions we have 100 kids and a lot of these kids are born and raised in the us not like indian background we have some american kids as well we have awesome. some guys who have ne- they're in their family they don't even know what cricket is but now they're taking cricket so seriously so that is the happiest moment i'm so proud when i see those kind of kids come in and they start putting in the work because they see a spark now they see major league they see world cup so they kind of see that they have a career in cricket going forward yeah and you think like baseball kids can transfer you know their per- their skills to to cricket if they if they I were you know coach few, coach right they have like i feel like baseball is a little more organized so somehow the baseball guys do try and come into cricket but somehow the baseball structure it's a mainstream sport in the us it's kind of laid off nicely where they see the following steps like if i'm at u11 i might if i do well i might go to 13 or 15 or step by step they see a pathway somehow when they come to cricket they kind of get blindsided or oh, what's going to happen what's going to happen it's very last moment so i I have, that's what my honest discussion with the parents was and that was the reason like the guys seemed very interested but they were like they don't see a clear picture of what's going to happen of cricket in the US so that's where they kind of fell out that's like a typical american thing they want like a full proof yeah. uh, set up where they want to know what's going to happen yeah. today tomorrow and after that which i'm a big believer very, of but unfortunately yeah. yeah very scheduled and very disciplined and by yeah. the book I mean, that's um, the way of going forward that's the right way if you want to take it forward yeah no they they take it very seriously i mean i played yeah. you know varsity baseball in high school here and yeah. you know it it was essentially the same way the kind of work you had to put in just to go yeah. warm the bench right <laughs> was it you had to go i mean it was it was very difficult but you know it, uh, it wasn't for everybody but it taught you a lot even in when yes. i played cricket it was always the hard work that it required yeah. for us to put in into the game yeah. you know so that's awesome man and guys we're having a great conversation with Jaskaran Malhotra if you're just joining us make sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel make sure to follow Jaskaran Malhotra's you know coaching instagram page i'll link it in the description and you know you guys if you guys want to have a coaching one on one coaching with mm-hmm. Jaskaran or his team in Maryland um you know yeah. you guys will be able to set something up and and you know go get some cricket coaching you know from the pro himself just garn you know let's let's talk a little bit about your debut you made your debut in 2017 right if i'm not mistaken um yeah yeah 2017 or 2018 i'm not sure but yeah somewhere around that time yeah so i think in UAE uh was your in the super 50 super 50 I was think. my first game with the us and then uh, uae was my t20 debut international debut yes against uae right that's that was your international debut against uae yeah, yeah both of my debuts are pretty decent like i did well in both my uh, debut games yeah i enjoy the bigger stage bigger platform I, i i think it just brings the best out of me like sometimes when the stakes are not that high i usually like just not get turned on at that level but when like the yeah. going gets hard i guess that's just my nature or my personality when the things get tougher that's where you know, a lot of people see my best you rise to the occasion man you know you're a clutch player as they call it in baseball you know big poppy they used to call him a big clutch player mm-hmm. would come in and smash a home run right at the time when needed man so I, you're in that category in cricket bro for us in the USA <laughs> you know yeah. so um you know big ups to to just grand malotra man and and good luck to you know him for the upcoming t20 world cup we want to see some wins out of the usa and you guys let us know in the yeah. comment what you guys think 
um, you know, this conversation so far. Just Garden Bay, what's what are some advice you want to give to again, you know, younger kids that are, you know, looking to get to the next level, maybe in their underage years, you know, 15, 16, getting to what are some advice that you can give them that, you, you know, know uh, want to play like I've been saying this for a long time. I feel like kids these days when I was growing up, I mean, I'm not that old, I'm 33. So, uh, you know, when I was growing up, so we didn't have phones and social media and all these. So our goal still, even with despite social media, I still keep my focus. I feel like these days kids get off track very easily. It's very important to keep your focus because cricket is a very unforgiving sport. And sometimes we lack patience, like kids, they want, because of social media, everybody, you know, it's like too much knowledge is also a problem. It's If you go on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, everybody knows how to make six pack abs. Everybody knows how to make bodies. But if you see general population, majority of them don't have it because they know how to do it, but they're not willing to put in the work of how it's done. It's the process, right? Which I was talking about. And process always takes a while. So I think these days kids have become very impatient and parents play a huge part in it. But if you do stay honest and, you know, stick to your process for a long period of time, results will come in your favor. Man, what a wonderful advice from Jaskar in there. The kids have to make sure, obviously, you know, to put in that yeah. effort man, and, and, and the yeah. more effort they put in, uh, right. you know, the Kobe used to say, you know, I used to put two a days, five a days, you know, it's the yeah. effort is the reason why they were standing on that stage when they go and collect yeah. those awards, right? It's like the more sugar you put in your coffee, the sweeter it gets, right? If you don't put any sugar, yeah. it's not going to get any sweet. It's as so simple as that. It's awesome, man. You know, let's talk a little bit about some improvements again um, mm -hmm. within the U.S. system, right? Because obviously we need a better pathway system. I think it's getting better. You know, uh, from the female cricket side, we look at it, the, the system, you know, I uh, interviewed Sindhu a couple of weeks back. We launched that episode and she, you know, had mentioned that, you know, um, the I mean, from what we've seen, the female structure is more, you know, mature, you know, because there's a lot less. Obviously, the volume is in there, but the U.S. Yeah. male system is still lacking clear pathway, as we see in baseball or in other cricket. So what do we need to yeah. do to fill the gap, Jessica, and by from your I perspective because you've seen it you know i just think it's a more of a communication thing i feel like as we said in the u.s mainstream line have big sponsors and have things set up already let's say if i if we are in a world cup uh this is like a world cup season we are almost what two months away three months away from the world cup in my opinion things should have been set up prior to the world cup like not like at the last moment so I feel like that's where the gap is a little bit. And I mean, U.S. cricket is still doing a lot of good stuff. We are having zonals. We are having trials all over the country. We had major league last year. So there are things happening. But of course, there are challenges. But, you know, hopefully we can give our best and hopefully we can uh, only pray that things uh, fall out and then we, uh, we should... Cricket should be a mainline sport in the U.S. very soon. I think so too, man. I think in the next 5, 10 years, it's gonna, it should be the major league... If Major League takes off the way they're planning out to be, I think it, it should be a mainstream sport. We'll, we should be seeing it on national TV a lot more often. So it's going to start to develop, um, you know, more right. interest. And with interest, see more players come through. But again, the schooling right. system is something where, you know, we still have a long, long way to go, in my opinion. Right. You know, getting cricket in schools here would be the right. ultimate. But, um, you know, are there are there any things we could do to, to, to fasten that process just current by or just kind of... We have I mean, to go so through the pains. With our, with our academy, Baltimore Royals, we've been going to a lot of Howard County schools in Maryland. We've been introducing cricket. Like, you know, I've been going with my U.S. jersey on to tell them, hey, I play for the country. I've signed a lot of autographs. I've taken a lot of pitches. Just to give them that feeling that, hey, cricket has that career as well. You can make a name. So I show them my Guinness Book of World Records as well. Hey, that I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records. Not like to show off, to kind of motivate them in a good way that if just by playing cricket, you can make your name as well. So we've been putting in a lot of effort, like going to the schools, going to the parks, just anywhere talking, just anywhere I go in Maryland to the mall. So, you know, just want to spread out the word as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, it has to be done at the grassroots level and it requires, right. you know, people part of the communities also taking that charge and, and speaking up about, you know, the sport and and just making people aware about it, that it exists. Yeah. And I think working with the cities, you know, and our town halls is a big one because, you know, when we obviously started our club, you know, we got support once we launched a youth rec program from the city. So that was yeah. big for us to, 
you know, get that program going, have the support of the city, and and they could ga- get the game to be more aware on their yeah. papers yeah. and on their media and stuff like that. So it's really, you know, locally is the work that needs to be done. And each area needs to have people stepping up to do these kind of work because it's all volunteer work. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's towards a cause that we need to kind yeah. of focus on, I think. Yeah, man. So it's been a great conversation, Just Kern Bay. I want to do a quick rapid fire round yeah. with you, um, you know, so let me just get ready for that. Are you ready for the rapid fire round? I'm going to do like yeah. 10 quick questions or 15 quick questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been ready. All right, bro. So rapid fire round with Just Kern Malothra and... We're starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Favorite cricket ground? My favorite is North Carolina, Church Street. I love Church Street, North Carolina. There you go. Toughest bowler you faced? Uh, It was uh, Trent Bolt with the new ball. I faced him in the second over. I mean, not like speed-wise, but the control he had was pretty good. Wow. One word to describe your six sixes in and over. Unbelievable. Test cricket or T20? Wait, I'll probably get into trouble for this, but I would go for T20. <laughs> the most <laughs> memorable match of your career? It was uh, the game USA versus Scotland when we needed 20 runs in the last over and I managed to chase that with Jesse Singh on the non-striker. Favorite cricketing hero? Uh, Virat Kohli and Kevin Peterson. Best advice you've ever received? Uh, I, as I said, I received the best advice from Andy Flower. You know, one thing he told me was, just be flexible in cricket with the open mindset and that not never like think with a narrow mind, like just be broad minded and that kind of changed my cricket. The biggest challenge in cricket today? Uh, I feel like, as I said, I feel like kids have become very uh, impatient. Like if we have that patience in cricket, because cricket is a game where it tests your patience. Even in T20, we feel like 120 balls are not enough, but they're actually yeah. enough. Favorite shot to play? Uh, I like stepping out to the fast bowlers and hitting it over their head. I love that feeling. <laughs> the most underrated player in the USA team. Nosh. Yeah. Your go-to pre-match meal. I usually, I mean, I have food like a couple of hours. Like I don't like eating right before the game, but I do have a latte or a cappuccino. That's my thing. I love it. Music you listen to before a game. Only Siddhu Musevara. Nice. <laughs> One rule you would change in cricket. Mankar thing, like I feel like I've done catch- that in one league once, yeah. but I would like to change it. <laughs> oh man, the best catch you've ever taken. It was on Ali Khan's bowling in uh, Oman against Kenya. Like it was one handed diving catch, it was pretty good. The most challenging aspect of coaching? Uh, just trying to convince the parent and trying to stay out of their child's life. You know, when the growth is happening, every parent's like to just get too involved. I think. Kids should enjoy the cricket and parents should stay away out of it. Right. The funniest teammate in the locker room. That's me. (laughs) One word to describe cricket in the USA. On the rise. Getting there. Nice. Sweet, man. And that was it, guys. That was the 20 questions with Jaskaran Malotra. Jaskaran, again, thank you so much for joining me, brother. Do you have any last piece of advice, man, for your fans or any message to your fans and well-wishers that you know, are waiting to see you in the T20 World Cup, man, because I'm super excited. Just one uh, generic message. I just want everybody to support USA Cricket. I know we are trying as players. We always want to win. We always want to put our best foot forward. Sometimes things go in our favor. Sometimes the results go not in our favor. I just want the honest support, honest feedback from all our fans. And we, we like that's our fuel, you know, whenever we see like people who actually love the sport and come out and support in numbers. That's our few that helps us perform better, better as a team. You know, thank you again, Jessica and by good luck in the T20 world cup. Good luck with your trainings and everything coming up. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Again, you know, if you're just joining us, we've had a wonderful conversation with Jessica on make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and yeah, until next time, you know, in the Khan and Jessica Malotra from the reverse scoop signing off. Have a great night, everybody.